had a couple <laughs> technological issues, but hopefully they're cured now. It's 708, 7.08, I uh, call the meeting the or to order. First with our mission statement. We here at Center Grove develop knowledgeable, competent, responsible citizens through inspirational and innovative learning opportunities. I would like, uh, you know, now we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like Mr. Dale Toomey to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Toomey. I think you've probably been to many more board meetings than I have over the years. So is that the first time we've had you lead the pledge? Yes, it is. We, we should have done it before tonight. So thank you. Uh, has everybody had the opportunity to uh, take a look at the agenda? Yes. Yes, sir. Do I have a motion uh, to adopt the agenda? Mr. President, I move that we adopt the agenda, removing five point or uh, the reports from the agendas of uh, 5.1. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Russell. Uh, please let it be shown that at the agenda, section 5.1 will be removed if this motion approves. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda has been adopted. Thank you. At this time, it's uh, time for public comment. It's, sees the, I see that uh, no one has signed up for public comment tonight, so we will skip over public comment. Next are the consent items. Once again, everyone should have received the consent items and had an opportunity to, uh, to look at those consent items. Do I have any questions or, or comments? Uh, the only question I have is on the field trip report. Those that we're approving tonight are obviously making the assumption that all the COVID, I mean, we've made it clear to both the band and the choir, the COVID restrictions have to be removed and all that That's kind correct. of good stuff. That's correct. And I think that uh, Mrs. Hoover, Mrs. Hoover, um, you had those conversations and yeah. I mean, I know, I know the one trip was a replacement <laughs> trip that got canceled this year due to COVID, but I think there's. And just so everyone knows, I think they probably do. The field trips have been canceled through the end of the school year. Um, we are going to announce that. That will have been in December, so what we'll be doing for second Okay. With all of our work. All the students that are purposeful documents, we'll communicate that right after the first year. Okay, so no final determination has been made yet, but people should be expecting a, a decision soon. And I don't know if they can hear you without a microphone. But, so anybody, anybody that's uh, watching online, expect a decision December 1st on field trips for second semester. And those that are on the agenda for tonight are way out in the future, subject to vaccines or all those things we're all hoping for. I, I do have a question. The, these two are extracurricular, right? Co-curricular. Co-curricular. What are we doing if our extracurricular activities? Because I'm hearing, yes, yeah, you mean to probably be easier for you to come to the microphone. <laughs> and, and board members too, if you can make sure your microphone's on when you talk, because we do people have people watching remotely. Do we need to close this out before discussing it? I think we're fine. Okay. Um, again, that, that decision will be made. Um, what we've done this semester <clears throat> is things that are IHSAA or ISMA, which ISMA has canceled this this fall. Um, so we're waiting to hear from that, but we'd like to move forward with um, sanctioned events and some competitions, and we want to put some guidelines in place, though, um, to do things to keep our students and, and our sponsors and our families who attend those things the most safe. So um, some things will be case-by-case -case basis, but we definitely want our students to compete in those statewide tournaments for their different activities, whether those are athletics or extracurriculars or co-curriculars. So that, that official document will come out um, right after Thanksgiving, the 30th or the 1st of okay. December. So up to that point, things have not been canceled for them? 
most things have been canceled. For example, ISMA this year in the fall. Right. No and events. You, so ISMA some of that was for done us. Done outside for us. of us. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and we're following the H IHSA guidelines for all of our athletic <coughs> activities, and we're basically extending those down into the middle school, even though they're not under officially under that umbrella. But we're using those same guidelines. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Do I hear a motion with respect to our consent items? Mr. President, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you, Mr. Hubbard. All those in favor of the consent items, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you. And Mrs. Hoover, thank you for your additional information on the consent items. Next, we'll move to our action items. The first action item is a request for an approval of employee stipends to be presented by Mr. Jason Taylor, Assistant Superintendent of HR and Technology. Mr. Taylor, the microphone is yours. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk about uh, two different topics under this action item. One is the TAG grant, the Teacher Appreciation Grant, and the other would be a general stipend for all of their other employees. The TAG grant provides $30 per student to school districts throughout the state of Indiana. That, that amount's reduced based off total students in the state, but that amount is given to each district to be paid to teachers. State law requires board policy for the distribution of the TAG grant, and we have board policy 3220.01, which outlines how Center Grove distributes that grant. The grant total will be used to pay stipends to teachers who received a final effectiveness rating of either effective or highly effective last school year. As per the policy and statutory requirements, stipends will be differentiated by 25% between highly effective and effective rated teachers. Dr. Gabriel has estimated the tax stipends for the current qualifying teachers and the approximate grant dollars that we received this year. This year, after a discussion with our Teachers Association, we've decided to make a modification to our method of distributing the TAG grant. Teachers will receive either a 1.25% stipend to be no less than $700 or $673 if they're rated highly effective, or a 1% stipend to be no less than $538 if they are rated effective last school year. This is a change. In the past, we've just done the flat amounts. This year, we're moving to more of a percentage-based model, which is more like the other two employee groups. Um, but we're also recommending to the board um, that they set a floor at those two amounts that I mentioned so that no individual teacher would make less than that this year in the TAG grant. I am also asking the board to approve a stipend for eligible administrators and all permanent support staff, levels A, B, C, as well as one level D employee, who meet the evaluation requirement. Level A and B employees will, will receive either a 1.25 stipend if they were rated highly effective or a 1% stipend if rated effective. Level C and D will receive the stipend in the amount of 1.25%. Pending board approval and the payment from the state, um, the stipends will be paid to all eligible employees on December 11th, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. <coughs> Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Taylor, would you go over uh, how the staff member qualifies? Sure. It's all based off their evaluation for last year. Uh, for many of our staff members, that was carried over from the prior year since we did have quite a truncated year last year. Um, and then most of our administrators and teachers are on a four, four level scale of highly effective, effective, needs improvement, or ineffective. Um, but in our support staff, we typically do a different rubric model that doesn't provide those four criteria. So, you know, there are a lot of things that go into that. Performance is one, attendance. Um, in some cases, it's a data point for a teacher. It's a, it's a lot of different methods that all fall under one final rating. And you also had to be an employee by... Some other criteria we have is that we do want you to be a full, a full year employee. So you had to be here 120 days or longer. And you also have to be active on December 1st. Um, that's part of the TAG grant of this year, actually. Oh, you have oh, to be here to get the payment. Yeah. Okay, yes. Question. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Any other questions from anyone on the board? Hearing no other questions or comments, do I hear a motion? Mr. President, I move that we approve employee stipends as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. second. 
Thank you, Mr. Russell. Thank you, Mrs. Toomey. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we're talking, uh, or we're going to be asked to consider a bid for the sale of iPads. Mr. Taylor, you're gonna join us again. <laughs> yes, sir. The microphone is yours. Thank you. Um, on Monday, November 2nd, 2020, at 2 p.m., we opened 15 bids for the purchase of surplus equipment, in this case, Apple iPads only. Uh, through a thorough analysis of the bids, I recommend that we accept the bid from Cornerstone Technologies. Cornerstone provided the best and highest bid to purchase the equipment. We have roughly 150, or we have 1,500 plus or minus iPad Air units, and the total amount from Cornerstone will be set at a minimum of $202,500. The proceeds from this sale go right back into the textbook rental fund and will be used for future technology purchases for our students. I do want to apologize. I was not given a center grove education like many in the room. Um, I did uh, not label my headings in proper order, but uh, <laughs> please forgive me that uh, my F becomes before my D. Um, <laughs> but you'll see I, I laid out the grid here. In green are the highest amounts per each graded level. Um, a great A iPad is brand new, just out of the box, barely used. Down to most of them will fall in a B, and then a few in the C, D, and F, depending on the wear and tear on the device. And most of ours were kept in cases, so we usually get that A or B rating, actually. Cornerstone's bid was very interesting. They offer a minimum of 202000 and they'll grade all the devices, and we could get an additional amount um, in total. So... I used a method here where I averaged roughly where we thought our devices would fall and established two, two pricing models, and they were actually were the leader in both. So, so I, I've got a question. Yeah. I, I hate to jump the gun instead of asking if others have one. So is Cornerstone the high bidder on all of these, or are we taking the respect of five for each grade? That's why I didn't yeah. understand what I saw. I, I, in this case, their fixed price, that second to last column at 202 is by far the highest amount we'd receive, even if we did all A's in the other ones. Um, which we won't. Um, and so, so having that floor is really attractive to us. We know the amount of money we're going to get. That's it's higher than we anticipated. It's great. Um, and we still stand the chance to go a little bit higher as we have some high quality devices. And, and I, the reason I ask is, I yeah. mean, it was just a few bucks more for the others. But yep. since you were highlighted in green, I wanted to make sure that yep. the number you're proposing to us is the 202 you're 500 correct. telling us it's a floor we might get more? Yes, that's I didn't, correct. I didn't mean to rhyme. No. Then another silly question, <laughs> why would the grade F and the grade D be different? Did you literally just transpose we still, the... uh, Since they do offer money for them, what they'll do is if it's a cracked screen, they might rate that a grade D or F, but they'll replace the screen and they'll sell it for a higher value. That, that wasn't my question. My question oh, is, I'm so how, sorry. how is an F a 40 and a, a D a 10? Is that what you're telling us? You put them in the wrong columns? Yeah. Okay. Are wrong. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for pointing that out. I appreciate that. <laughs> 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 no, I, I was wondering why it... <laughs> Kick a guy while he's down. I didn't try to. I was trying to understand, Mr. Taylor. Uh, now, honestly, yeah. I think this is wonderful that we're yeah. being not able many to raise level. money from these. Not so, many offer a level F. That's why it's so few. Okay. Yeah, this is this is wonderful. We're, we're able to recoup money off of this stuff. So, does anybody else on the board have any questions or comments? Have we used Cornerstone before? Oh, we have not. This will be their first time. Be their first. Yep. Is this the but first time? We did for check them to references bid? and pardon? No. This is, no, they've they've been, bid before. Yeah, they've changed okay. their structure. And, um, we've talked to multiple references, and they're going to be here pending your approval next week to collect. Who graded these? They do when they come on site. Okay, so they, they give us a breakdown, and we know. And from past allotments, we found out that most of ours will fall in a B, and the second most is an A, and then we have a few that fall in the other categories. Okay. We still have coming. We still have a supply after we sell these. We still have a supply. Yeah, interchange we use this kids. money to allow us to refresh the devices more frequently. And so this lets us refresh student devices every three years. Um, this pays for that fourth year in our cycle of, of replacement cost. So it's kind of a just everything. I'll bring back middle school next year because they'll be mixed up. These are mainly high school devices. I like the effort to get additional revenues yeah, from assets that are sitting there needing to move on any other questions or comments do we have any uh, motion I move that we accept the bid from Cornerstone Technologies for a minimum amount of two hundred and two thousand five hundred for the sale of surplus iPads do I hear a second 
Second. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you, Mrs. Toomey. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it 5 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we're moving on to consideration of bids for the Emergency Operations Center. Dr. Bill Long, Assistant Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Taylor, for your presentations. Thank you. <clears throat> That's a tough act to follow. I did my bid packets one through five and didn't rearrange them by anything. So uh, try to follow along with me instead of well, having them mixed up a little bit. numbers. So, yeah, I know. Since you're, since you're taking a crack at him, he just brought us money and you're asking us to spend money. <laughs> so right now he's our favorite. <laughs> well, I'll work with him and I'll sing the ABC song <laughs> with him so we can... We can get those right next time, and, and he wins. He's the favorite, so. Um, wow. <laughs> Learn to keep my mouth closed. <laughs> um, so on November 10th of 2020 at 2 o'clock, we opened bids for the Emergency Operations Center along with AECOM AE Hunt and Axis Ar Architecture, and Jim Gulley is here tonight from AECOM Hunt to answer your hard questions. Um, we opened, actually we opened 29 bids for five different bid packages, so we were really pleased by the turnout. I think that's the largest turnout that we've had since I've been here, and I, we feel really good about um, the, the value that we got from our bid packages. Um, tonight we're asking the board to approve bid, bids for bid packages one through five. Bid packet number one is for site work with Dave O'Mara for in, in the amount of $832,900. Bid packet number two is for general trades with FH Passion for $2,059,900. Bid packet number three is for roofing with Amos Exteriors for $230,100. Bid packet number four is for mechanical plumbing and fire suppression for $1,120,500. And bid packet number five is for electrical and technology with Banta Electric. Oh, I didn't say. Uh, mechanical plumbing and fire suppression is with Lehman. Right, yeah. And then, uh, sorry. And then uh, the electrical and technology is with Banta for $750,715. The total amount is $4,994,115. We have... Um, uh, a, a, a bond issue that we sold uh, or that the board approved a while ago when we did the 1028 hearing. We also have a contribution from the White River Township Fire Protection Board. Uh, so we have enough money uh, to cover the cost of the, the construction and the soft cost of the construction. We expect to start construction at the beginning of December of 2020 and look to have it completely wrapped up uh, by next December of 2021. Thank you, Dr. Long. I'll go to Mr. Alexander first, because I know he's spent a lot of time in this to try to pull the deal together. Do you have any questions or comments that you'd like to add to that? No, I think the only, the only comment I'll make is um, I know the Johnson County Council, um, when White River went for their additional appropriation for this, commended the board uh, for pulling um, multiple government agencies together to work on a project like this. Um, and I know, um, you know, as Dr. Long has progressed through this project, the uh, uh, county commissioners um, um, have been have been very supportive of the project as well. So um, they've been at the county level. There's been a lot of it, um, excitement about, you know, getting the agencies to work together for a common common cause. And you know, um, just as a reminder for everybody. Um, you know, this, this is one of the things that came out of our safety and security um, audit that we had done. When was that, Dr. Long, 2018? It's been two years now, yes. Um, and, you know, this was, this was one of their recommendations, and I think we took their recommendation a step further in including the Sheriff's Department, um, the Fire Department, on top of our own police department um, in, in monitoring <laughs> that we intend to do for the school district. So. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Do I hear any other questions or comments from any other board members? Just glad to see it's getting started. I just have a question for Mr. Goley. With the number of additional bidders that we saw on this, is that a trend you're seeing elsewhere, or is this just, I mean, what, what do you attribute that to? 
other than Hunt's hard work. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a combination of things, uh, yeah. Ralph. I think it's the, the COVID atmosphere is just throwing a lot of work because you know, owners are stopping projects. Mm -hmm. So I think it's requiring a lot of uh, companies want to get some more backlog going and things. So I think that's one item. The other item is if this project is a small project where it got a lot of Companies, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, I want to add, it's one thing I was taken by was just the number of folks who were bidding on this. I mean, that's not what we usually see on our larger projects, let alone something this size. Like Bill said, I think this is the largest one that I ever personally been involved in. The number of bids we've got in five packages. And I noticed a couple, a couple withdrew their bids. Is that something you feel comfortable sharing or? I, I don't mind. I, one, one of the companies transcribed their numbers wrong into different bid packets. You know, they, they did two bids and they transcribed their numbers wrong and, and so it, it, threw it threw their bids off. And the other company probably just didn't fill it out quite the, the, their, their bid quite the way we wanted or expected them to do and left some gaps. So, um, yeah, we feel, feel good even with those being pulled. Uh, our numbers were really good and allows us to do what we wanted to do and we're really appreciative of the board being patient with us as we sometimes stumbled through this but I think we're in a good place right now and appreciate the board's patience as we kind of work through all that. Well I know this is an important project since you know the, the report came out a few years ago to put it somewhere and right. make it close to the high school, middle school, elementary so you know thanks for your efforts and the fact that it's under budget this time. And so last time we were so surprised at how far over budget it was. Right. So thanks for everyone's efforts. Thank you. I do want to commend Dr. Long and his team. You just made a mention of something that may seem small, but I think it's important. Bids not being totally filled out, apps or whatever, that you have, you've held people to, their, to the fire on that. So that's what they should know when it gets out into the construction environment. They should know coming to Center Grove, they're going to be held to that standard, and I appreciate that. Yeah, that's um, that's AECOM Hunt. They've done a great job for us to help us maintain the standards that we know the community and the board expect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing no other questions or comments, do I hear a motion? Mr. President, I move that we accept the bids totaling four million. $994,115 for the emergency operations project as presented. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Thank you, Mr. Hubbard. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, 5 0. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Next, we're asked to. Uh, consider the authorization of 2021 tax anticipation warrants. And I asked Dr. Paul Gabriel, our chief financial officer, to come to the podium. The microphone is yours, sir. Thank you. Uh, again, in 2021, we'll be participating in the Indiana Bond Bank Advanced Funding Program, which issues temporary loans in, in anticipation of property tax revenues. And this we do this because property taxes are typically received in June and December, and we end up having a cash flow problem in the months right before that, in April and May and October and November. For 2021, we anticipate needing to borrow $4.1 million, and, uh, and of course we pay this back when the taxes come in. Uh, for comparison purposes, in 2020, we borrowed $4.4 million, and our rate was 1.65% interest we paid. We're borrowing the Indiana Bond Bank. We'll, we'll literally have a pool of billions of dollars, so we participate in that and get a very good rate. All the legal documents have been prepared by both McKinney and Evans, the same uh, council that did this in prior years, and the board members have received an electronic copy of the 100 pages worth of all the detailed documents. These documents are in the same form that we've used in the past, and uh, we also have a a chart prepared with the board material there that shows the amounts that we've borrowed in prior years. The last few years have been relatively constant. So 
This evening, board action is needed uh, to approve the resolution and to authorize the board president and secretary to sign and ex execute documents. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel. Are there any questions or comments from anyone on the board? Just comment. Just to be clear to the community, this is a process we do every year. Every year. Yes. I've been, this is, again, number 14 for the time I've, I've been up here to do this. <laughs> it's, plus, a, it's a necessary process. Yeah. Plus others at your prior schools. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Russell. I think that's a good clarification. Any other questions or comments from anybody else on the board? Seeing no other questions or comments, do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move that we approve the resolution authorizing the anticipation, <coughs> yeah, warrants and uh, authorize the president and secretary to sign documents as needed. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Mr. Alexander, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you. Now Dr. Gabriel will uh, give us a presentation asking for uh, the approval of certain miscellaneous contracts entered into by the school. As, as part of our focus on internal controls, the business office has implemented a system to manage the various contracts that the school district has in place. In the past few months, a number of steps have been taken, uh, in, including a review of our written procedures for, for contract approval, uh, reviewing each of the contracts that we have in our files, uh, loading all the contracts uh, into a digital storage system that we're using, and also establishing an, a reminder system that works automatically to remind us when contracts are coming up for renewal. And I didn't mention it in the memo, but we also, uh, uh, load any contracts which are an expenditure over $50,000 onto a state public website that, that the state has established requires us to do that. As, as part of this review, we've got five contracts that require board approval uh, based on policy 6320. Um, and I want to make it clear that these contracts are already in place. Expenses associated with them are already part of our existing budget. There's nothing these are not new contracts, or there's no new expenses here. We're just uh, taking, the, taking these to the board for your approval uh, based on policy 6320. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel. Do I have any questions or comments from anyone on the board? Hearing no questions or comments, do I hear a motion? I move that we approve the miscellaneous contracts as presented. It was the longest motion of the night. There you go. <laughs> do, I, do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Russell, Mr. Alexander. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, 5-0. Thank you. That was 8.5, correct? Yes. We're now on 8.6. Once again, Dr. Gabriel, now he's going to uh, ask for us to authorize additional appropriations. And this is the hearing, you need to call the hearing order. Thank you. Order. you want to read your party? Sure. <laughs> This evening's board meeting has been appropriately advertised as an additional appropriations hearing. And I will turn it over to Mr. Daniels to run the hearing. Thank you, uh, Dr. Arkanoff. I now open this public hearing and I'd like to add, call on Dr. Gabriel to provide information about additional appropriations and he will make a brief presentation. Okay. Dr. Gabriel, the floor is yours. All right. I'm just going to uh, very quickly list the different things to which we're asking the additional appropriation. Um, and if there are any questions, we can talk about them further. Uh, there's $151,000 uh, in the operations fund to pay the stipends that were just approved, uh, $94,000 in the operations fund to pay raises of 2% that were approved earlier this year. Uh, $110,000 to pay for new staff that began at the beginning of the 2021 school year. 
of $615,000 appropriated to pay expenses associated with COVID-19. Um, and uh, we're we still hopeful that we'll get some money back from that for FEMA, but from FEMA, but we don't know yet. And $50,000 dollars uh, appropriated to pay for an additional police vehicle with all of its associated equipment. All of that in the operations fund and the education fund. $468,000 would be appropriated to pay the teacher appreciation grant, which you just approved. Um, $312,000 uh, appropriated to pay staff raises of 2% that were previously approved. $471,000 uh, appropriated to pay for new staff in the education fund that were that started at the beginning of the 2021 20, school year. Uh, money for this appropriation will, will come from a combination of cash balance, teacher appreciation grant funds, and new formula revenue for the second half of the calendar year 2020 that we receive based on the new formula and on, on, on additional students at the beginning of this school year. And, I, and I'd like to just say that this is also something that we have done most every year. Anytime the state provides additional money in the formula that begins with the school year or anytime we give raises um, or, or things like the teacher appreciation grant that happen at the end of the year. So this is pretty much the same process that we've done for the past few years at this time. So I turn this back to uh, the president to complete the hearing. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel. At this time, it's appropriate if there are any members of the public that have any uh, comments that they have with respect to the request for additional appropriations, I ask them to uh, signify by raising their hand. Seeing no hands raised, um, it appears there are no public members that, that would like to comment tonight. So I now close this public hearing. Are there any of the board members who have any questions or comments with, with respect to the request for additional appropriations? I know you touched on it, Dr. Gabriel, but this is kind of like our previous item as a process we do every year. The items obviously are, are a little different, are yeah. a little different year to year, but yeah. you know, along, along the same thought process. So mm -hmm. just clarifying that for everybody, this yeah. isn't additional money that was outside the budget. It's just how we move things around within the budget. <laughs> These, these are all expenses, obviously, that we've been, we planned for we and planned the board has, has approved. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from any board members? Hearing no questions or comments, do I have a motion? Mr. President, I move that we approve the resolution authorizing the additional appropriations as presented. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Alexander and Mr. Russell. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it 5-0. We next move on to an additional public hearing, and this is a public yes. hearing with respect to uh, GO bonds for Sugar Grove Elementary. This evening's uh, board meeting has appropriate and appropriately advertised as a hearing on the bonds for the Sugar Grove Elementary uh, project, and I will turn it over to Mr. Danny. Thank you, Dr. Arkanoff. I now open this public hearing and I'll call Dr. Gabriel to provide some background information and make a presentation with respect to the Sugar Grove GO bond request. I would like to say, I know you like to have guests introduced and, and we have Mr. Jeff Falkenbush, who's our counsel on this project, on this item and also the next item on the agenda. As Dr. Long said, he can answer the tough questions if you have any. <laughs> um, so this is the third time that we've been in, in front of the, or the, I'm sorry, the fourth time that we've been in front of the board on the Sugar Grove project. Uh, if you turn to the next slide there, uh, you can see that we were, this was discussed on board meetings on June 18th, July 23rd, and September the 24th. Uh, this evening will be uh, <clears throat> the last time that the board discusses this prior to the, the actual availability of the money. And as you can see there, uh, the money will be available in December. Um, and then uh, sometime in the spring of next year, Dr. Long will bring, will bring back the bids for this work and it's expected to be completed by 2023. Um, just a summary, um, this project, the cost of this project is $15,900,000 and the architects are currently working on the plans for this. 
Uh, payment of these bonds will not start until 2023. Um, so this doesn't impact any immediate budget. Uh, but we have, in our, as part of our long-term planning, factored these payments into our anticipated tax rates, and we do not think that this, these payments will cause a tax rate to increase. Um, work on this, as it was previously said, will be completed by the summer of 2023. I've attached all of the slides from the last presentation. There hasn't, there's no change in those, um, but they're, they're here as a matter of reference if anyone has any questions. So at this point, I, I turn it back over to Mr. Daniels to, to complete the hearing. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel. This is the appropriate time for members of the community to speak on the uh, request for the issuance of the general obligation bonds for Sugar Grove Elementary Project. Are there anyone from the community who'd like to speak? If so, I ask if you'd raise your hand. Seeing no members of the community um, seeking to speak, I now close the public hearing. Any questions or comments from anyone on the board with respect to the request for the GO bonds for the Sugar Grove Project? I guess I'll just speak up and say I, I still have concerns about such a large project falling when it's going to fall. I understand this is bond money outside of our budget, normal budget. Uh, it's a large project going on when we could have some really down times, possibly. So I, I'm just concerned about that, what the optics would look like and so forth. It's a needed project. I'll agree with that. It's falling at the wrong time. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Any other questions or comments? Are the borrowing terms pretty favorable right now? That's the hard question for you, Mr. Quackamoo. Uh, they're very favorable. Uh, right now, the senior treasury is below 1%. Uh, we sold some bonds for like the general obligation bonds that were less than 1%. We're probably looking to ease uh, if rates stay, which the federal uh, treasury is saying that they are going to keep rates extremely low. We're probably looking at a 20 year bond or between 1 and a half to 2%. Wow, that's some of the lowest rates I think I've ever heard. So the short answer is yes. <laughs> 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 I'm an attorney, so I have to give yeah. another attorney a hard time every now and then. Mr. Daniels, thank you for putting that in layman's terms where you and I understood. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, questions or comments? Are you taking loan applications out? Wow. <laughs> 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 favorable terms. Hearing uh, no additional comments, and thank you, uh, Mr. Quackenbush, for your, for your information. Uh, do I hear a motion? Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Toomey and Mr. Alexander. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Let the uh, record reflect 4-1 <laughs> the ayes have it. Thank you. Next, I'll turn it over again to Dr. Gabriel for uh, consideration of the approval of the sale of property adjacent to Sugar Grove Elementary. And just before I turn it over to you, I want to say that one time I read that incorrectly, that it sounded like we were selling Sugar Grove. <laughs> so we're not selling Sugar no. Grove. We're selling the property adjacent Vacant to Sugar land. Grove. Vacant land. Yeah, I'm very pleased to bring this to the board because we started this process in 2017-18, uh, took bids, had it sold, and, and then uh, because of difficulties getting sewer access, the, the sale fell through. So we started it again. And, as you can see, on September 11th, we put a notice in the, in the paper about a, an auction, um, and um, uh, Dr. Arkanoff, Arkanoff and I contacted, I think, five different uh, potential buyers. Um, we took the bids on October the 14th. Um, there was one bid received. It was, a, it was a million two from MI Homes. That's the amount of a minimum that we uh, specified in the in the documentation and that is the amount that was bid in 2017-18 when it was done before. So at this point we've got a a, uh, a purchase agreement which uh, uh, Jeff Quackenbush has has worked on with their attorneys and the attorneys on both sides have, have agreed to this agreement. So at this time we're recommending that the board approve the bid from MI Homes uh, in the amount of a million uh, two hundred thousand dollars 
and deposit the money in the rainy day fund to be used for the, for the future purchase of land. Thank you, Dr. Gabriel. Do I have any questions or comments from anyone on the board with respect to the proposed sale of the land adjacent to Sugar Grove? I guess I'll comment and say, good work. I mean, we have land there that we sold once for this amount, and with a contingency, it didn't go through. This time, that contingency is not there, correct? Uh, there are some contingencies. But not the same. Uh, but not, <laughs> yeah. But, Sewer's they, but, not the problem. We're, we're back here because they have assured us that, they'll, that they uh, will be able to work with Greenwood to get the appropriate permits on this property. Okay. But uh, I guess good perseverance to get this thing sold because yep. it's money we can, we can use. Oh, yes. Absolutely. And I know from sitting on the RDC. I know from sitting on the RDC committee, um, they, I think they've, that area has, they're almost done with the sewer, yeah. installing the additional sewer capacity in that area. That doesn't apply to the west or the south yet, but in that area it does, so. Uh, do, do we have any idea when MI might begin to put houses in there? Well, I think they're, um, What's the amount of time they have for, for, for the permitting? 210 days? We've given them 210 days to get through all the zoning and permitting process. Uh, they will start right away with that process. And in theory, it should be done much sooner than that. But we're probably looking at them not being able to work on the ground and some extra time. Hopefully, we will be going by until late 2022. Mid to late 22? Yes. yes. You got that, Dr. Long? Mid to late 22? Okay. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Is this the same company that, that won the bid last time? Yes, it, it is. Okay. Anything else? Do I hear a motion? Mr. President, I'm sorry. I move that we approve, with, approve the purchase agreement with MI Homes for the sale of the Sugar Grove property. I'm going to second this one. <laughs> Third. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Alexander and Mr. Daniels. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. 5-0. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Gabriel. <laughs> that concludes our action items. Now we're on to other, other business. And I do want to make one acknowledgement that this will be the last board meeting for a very special member of our community. Mrs. Carol Toomey is retiring from the board, and I don't want today to go without acknowledging, you know, what she's meant to the school, what she's meant to each one of us up here on the board and the administration. I ask that it's going to be probably the best or the worst kept secret, but we're going to do something special for her in January and February. So <laughs> I ask for you to keep your eyes open. We will advertise it, and when you see it, I think it's going to be a wonderful thing for not only her but for our community. So. I want to especially thank her for her time here and everything that she's done. Mr. Alexander, do you have anything to add? Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to take my mask off, Mrs. Toomey. Um, we were actually having a uh, do you remember moment earlier this evening when I got thoroughly, thoroughly scolded by Mrs. Toomey at a Education Foundation board meeting in 2010 because I hadn't filed to run for school board <laughs> after losing to her and Mr. Steed in 2008. Um, the very next day, I went and got my packet, and I, and a matter of fact, I believe she uh, even signed my packet to run that year, and it's been a pleasure to be on the board with you. Thanks for the scolding. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. And, we, oh, and, and we look forward to seeing you back in January. <laughs> Mr. Hubbard, would you like to add anything? Uh, yes, I would. Um, Carol, I would like to thank you. For, you know, being the newest member on the board, only being here two years so far, you've done a lot for me and kind of helped me. You know, when I first came in, you took me around right under your wing and kind of showed me the ropes on things and kind of how we handle things. So I do appreciate that. And, I have all the love for you and Dale, and I wish you guys the best, and I, I'm excited for January to see how this is going to go. So. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Russell? Let me get through this. Because <laughs> Carol and I, 
Mexico a few years back. Mm -hmm. I've known her since elementary school and uh, had her as a teacher many times going through there. Came back uh, to the community and started subbing and Carol and I were subbing next to each other. And I will never forget the day I looked at her and instead of saying Mrs. Toomey, I said, Carol, what's our next assignment? <laughs> and I got the look. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she wanted me to say Mrs. Toomey. <laughs> but that was kind of the start of, of, of our relationship, our friendship that we've developed all these years with Dale and you, um, going to games together and uh, taking care of things together. I can't tell you uh, and the audience how many thousands of students you have touched, both you and Dale. Uh, things that you were used to be able to do, taking kids on ventures and things like that, mm -hmm. and what it's meant to them. Um, and uh, that's why they still invite you to the girls' nights outs and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so maybe you didn't have children of your own, but you have thousands of children that all love you and respect you and will always care about you. So this is not a goodbye. It's just a... You've, you've accomplished one item, it's on to another step, another item to accomplish in your life, of which you've done so much, both you and Dale. Uh, so we love you, and uh, we will see you around. We got games to go together, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Russell. Dr. Arkanoff, do you have anything to add? Sure. Yes, I do. Carol? Um, also, too, I'll slide back a little bit. I'm taking my mask off, but... Um, <clears throat> I cannot express uh, how much you've meant to me. Um, you were the first voice of Center Grove. Um, when you uh, called and, <laughs> and, and uh, offered me the job, I'll never forget uh, my phone ringing and I was at the Willard watching the NCAA championships. And I knew it was your phone number, and I ran out of there because I did not want you to hear me listening to a game in the Willard. <laughs> <laughs> now we expect that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was absolutely sure you were going to tell me, thank you for applying, but we're going to go with somebody else. And when you said to me that you were honored to offer me the position, I just, uh, I could just reach through that phone and kiss you. So, um, I just, I owe oh, you go both, you and Dale, just so much. And um, we're all just really blessed to have had you in our lives. So um, we're going to miss you, but we're going to keep keep seeing you. I'll be hiding around. I know you will. <laughs> I know where to find you. Every basketball, football That's game, true. swim, meet, track, That's field, right. everything. <laughs> and I'm sure if we get out of hand, we'll get the look. <laughs> Yes, and I will call I, you in to take care of these. I would, ex I would expect nothing less. <laughs> Mrs. Toomey, would you like to add anything? Make sure the I, I don't have anything prepared. I didn't know this was all going to happen. Um, hope I can get through this. Um, I cannot tell you how blessed I have been, and I want to continue it. Okay, and God bless all of you, and... What a wonderful community we have, and what great people we have to work with, and uh, what students we have, uh, the best in the country. And uh, it's, been, it's been a great joy, and they have been our family, and uh, it's been a great joy. Fabulous. And I'll tell you, everybody be ready for January and February. That's gonna be the celebration. It's gonna be special. And Dale, we thank you too for loaning her to us for all these board meetings and executive sessions and <laughs> all those different things that I know was pulled away from, from the two of you's time together. So thank you for, for letting us uh, get, I hope you get to look too on occasion. <laughs> I, hate to, I hate to, you know, now ask if there are any other announcements because I don't think we can top that, but are there any other announcements? <laughs> Um, our board meeting in December uh, will not occur if it has been formally canceled, correct? Uh, not yet. Oh, now, yeah. Okay, we'll, yeah, we're, we're planning on canceling the board meeting in December. You'll see a public notice for that. The next meeting will be January. If something changes where we have to meet, we'll put out a notice, but we're not planning on meeting. That's generally we don't have the December meeting. And January 5th is the meeting. 
January 5th would be the next meeting. Thank you, Dr. Arkham. Our reorganization meeting as well. Great. Reorganization meeting on January 5th. Uh, hope to see you all there. Any other uh, comments, questions? If not, do I hear a motion for adjournment? Mr. Toomey, would you like to adjourn us? Uh, Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session. How about we all second that one? Second, second by everyone. All those in favor, sing my face with that by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Please, everybody, uh, make sure you sign.